Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. We are into July of 1940, the German invasion of France is underway, Belgium has fallen, Holland has fallen, and the Germans have begun their assault on France itself. We have held the line for another turn, and we're hoping we can hold it for at least one more into August, but we'll see how much longer France can hold out. The troops are suffering from low morale. The British have evacuated France, which actually hurts French morale too, now that I think about it. Um, but we've at least saved two British corps uh, and the British air units out of, uh, out of France, which is hopefully enough to prevent a German invasion across the Channel um, in conjunction with our naval forces. With that being said, uh, that's kind of the setup for you right now so let's just go ahead and get started now i think let's actually we, wow they may do that they may do that move down there all right um we also have some air units here that i apparently naval units here that i forgot we had so we're gonna go ahead and move some of them um Enemy contact! There's an enemy destroyer in port up here. Nope, don't do that. Alright, um... Apparently I didn't use, like, any of my naval forces yet this turn. Not that I have a lot of naval forces to use. Most of them are French. But we can at least get the British ones out of here. Okay... Yikes, six to one, don't do that. All right, most of these French units are gonna go away. Oh, the Italian battleships are down here. I wasn't even paying attention. Um, all right, but in any event, I don't wanna attack them in port, so. Um, this way, that's the French Dunkirk battleship. So we'll see if we can do more damage to the, the Italian Navy in the next turn, but let's go ahead and jump into the AI turn here and let's see what August brings. So we're suffering some attrition here for our troops that are cutting off to Brook. The uh, Chinese are completing their fortifications here to the west of Changshao. We're, continue to build, we're continuing to build what I'm referring to as the Maginot Line of, uh, of China. Meanwhile, America is making some progress from a research and development perspective. New incomes coming in here. And I wonder if we're going to get an event that's like... Britain abandons France, lose a thousand national morale or whatever it is, because I completely forgot that the British need to keep a certain number of units in France in order to keep their morale up, uh, and when that decreases, uh, well, they naturally lose heart. Um, meanwhile, Japanese carriers here are continuing to bombard various Chinese units. That destroyer decided to sail across the path of a battleship and lost some hit points. Uh, some Italian submarines are attacking French destroyers, which seems like a bad idea for a uh, a, a submarine to do, but it seemed to work out for them, um, and uh, the invasions continue. Meanwhile, the Japanese are adjusting some troops around here in China, where the situation is somewhat stagnant. We continue to attack along a couple of lines there, and they continue to reinforce some of the units, like at Pakoi. Meanwhile, I'm guessing the, the Germans are going to focus their uh, tactical bombers on a couple of units that will allow them to break out. You can see this army unit here has been the subject of multiple tactical bombings, but they're also focusing on Lille as well, which is interesting. The Italians have nearly broken out in the southern of France as well, uh, so we'll have to see how that all plays out. More Japanese carriers bombing troops near Pao Tau, even though there's really no border there. German tanks attack two separate units, one at Lille and one not at Lille, and then they kind of break through at Lille itself um, and take the city. Then they wipe out the uh, the infantry army to the west of Sedan, and then they wipe out the German armored unit uh, at Amiens. Infantry is totally broken out and flanked us to the north. Um, I'm not going to have anything to withdraw into Paris with. Uh, meanwhile, the Chinese there just got pushed back. Um, some attack out of Luxembourg fails pretty decisively. More Japanese assaults here in central China. Not really accomplishing a ton. They're taking some damage. They're not, you know, they're inflicting some damage, but nothing decisive to this point. The Italians trying to uh, exploit their breakthrough in the south. They don't advance past Lyon, however. And the Italians at uh, uh, Addis Abba in Ethiopia attack a French garrison unit there, uh, but actually lose, the, the Italians lose some hit points there, despite being on the offensive against a vastly smaller force. 
So it looks like France will survive for one more turn. I would guess not further. Um, because they're pretty close to completely investing Paris there. And they're going to have enough units there to launch multiple attacks on Paris in the single day. And then presumably advance into the city itself. So we're probably moving on to the final day of uh, France's existence. French morale continues to fall because that's the only thing the French ever get an event for is that their morale sucks. Japan is announcing its desire to create a greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. The German Blitzkrieg continues toward Paris and the French are freaking the fuck out. Oh my God, the British have abandoned us. Uh, they're not sounding like that. I don't know why I'm making that voice. Uh, the first uh, French-Polish Corps is destroyed. Apparently, free French troops fighting with the, the French. The 9th Army destroyed. The 1st DCR heavy tanks destroyed. And the 1st Engineers destroyed. The 11th Garrison from the Italians suffer attrition. French morale falls. And German Blitzkrieg continues. The Office of the British Foreign Secretary. Given the threats now facing our convoy routes from around the world, the U.S. government has offered uh, us some destroyers in return for bases in the Caribbean and British Guiana. Although these five destroyer units will need repairs and fitting out to prepare them for service, their numbers could really help uh, to keep the Atlantic safe for our shipping. In addition, this evidence of U.S. support for our struggle will boost our national morale by 1,000 points. However, by agreeing to this, the transfer of bases will roughly have our imports from the British Empire and Caribbean. That's We wouldn't lose half our imports. That's ridiculous. Uh, what do the notes say? Uh, if we say yes, the UK receives a 6-strength destroyer at Scapa Flow, an 8-strength destroyer at Castleton, and a 6-strength destroyer at Lancaster. Canada gets an 8-strength destroyer and a 6-strength destroyer. The only downside to saying yes is that our income from the Caribbean will be reduced, but at least with these destroyers, we'll be better able to protect our convoy routes in the Atlantic. Yeah, I can use more naval vessels. British morale is boosted by the destroyers for bases agreement. Bermuda becomes American. Uh, British Minister of Defense, Hastings is May. Our 7th Armored Division in Egypt is very incomplete, having only about 65 obsolete vehicles, very few of them are, of which are combat worthy. We are currently in the process of completing 150 new tanks that will soon be ready for service, and given, to the, or given the Axis threat to our position in Egypt, it is recommended that these new tanks be sent to strengthen the 7th Armored. However, sending these tanks to Egypt will require a heavily armed naval convoy that will cost us 45 MPPs, and the tanks won't arrive until mid-October of 1940. Would you like to send these to Egypt? It's generally best to say yes to sending the 7th Armored to Egypt, as it's essential to secure the safety of our position there. The only good thing for saying no would be if the Axis were invading the UK. The 7th Armored is known as the Desert Rats, saw action in North Africa, Italy, and liberation of Northwest Europe, while one brigade also fought against the Japanese in Burma. Yeah, I guess we'll say yes. Also, we get some new fighters. New fighters! I don't know why I'm saying it like that. New fighters, new fighter aircraft are joining the British forces near London. Is that a level one? No, it's a level zero fighter. They're hurricanes. Okay. All right, so there's the German breakout. Uh, special forces attack that core and do nothing. All right, so we are going to do some weird things here. We're going to go ahead and move this army corps. Oh, no, we can't make it. They can't make it. I thought they could make it. Uh, shit. Operate. Fall back to Paris, my boys. Fall back. All right, so we're actually abandoning the east. Let's see if we can do that. I don't know if that'll be a good idea or not. Pull the bombers back. Put these guys here. Um, I don't have a ton of money as the French. It might be better to spend it on reinforcements. We'll go ahead and pull these guys past Chalon. I might be able to stretch my defensive one more turn. So we're going to put an army to the west of Paris, an army into Paris, and then we're going to have some armies to the north and then to the east. So maybe, maybe we can have some success here and, and delay the Germans enough to build up this new defensive line. Can I move this guy anywhere? I can. All right, so let's operate this guy to here. And so we're going to have a new defensive line Basically, it's the Paris line, I think. 
just kind of huddled in around Paris itself. So hopefully it takes them a, a turn or, or turn or so to break through here, and maybe just maybe we can survive one more turn. I'm actually going to move this tactical unit up here just to invite an enemy attack, which will use up one of their hit points. These guys can obviously all advance into Paris and attack our troops here, which are not going to be dug in or behind fortifications. But the hope is that they won't be able to move far enough to get to Paris to really aid in the assault. While these guys who are close enough to aid in the assault will now have an entire new line of infantry in their way. So let's hope that allows us to hang on to France one more turn. Meanwhile, the French in the south getting pretty badly chewed up by the Italians at Lyon. And I think that's the new situation there. Uh, the British have 270 income. I'm thinking we can probably spend some of that to get these guys on transports. Let's see how far we can get them. Let's move these guys. Is this a British colony? I can't even tell. Point de Nord. Is this French? It is French. All right, let's see if we can get these uh, the South African forces here that are working on getting into port to get up to England. So we'll use some money on that. Meanwhile, these guys are surrounded. We'll finish that uh, garrison off there. The interesting thing is the Italians at Mozambique have not actually started doing anything. Alright, so we're going to start wearing down the Italian troops at uh, Ethiop in Ethiopia. Reinforce these French troops here. Okay, so we've got the capital of Ethiopia surrounded. We've got some good supply coming up. Um, these guys actually already attacked, so there's no real reason to swap them out. And then we'll go after Mogadishu next. And once that happens, then we'll be in, in good position to lend further support to the invasion of uh, Libya. All right, let's go ahead and bombard these guys. They have two shells still. Nice. So it should at least hurt the Italian army's morale. Tactical bombers. We'll have the fighters strafe the guys. The morale continues to fall. Wow, we actually took some casualties there. That kind of sucked. All right. Um, that'll be that. I should have bombed them with... Well, I don't really have much in the way of air units on these carriers. Uh, is the other guy at Tripoli? Oh, enemy sub. I think he's at Tripoli. He is. Whoa! They only have one health point left? Nice! We just sank another Italian battleship! Woohoo! Alright, so the Italian Navy just lost another battleship. What's its Navy numbers at now? Uh, the Italians have five naval units. I think three of those are subs. Maybe more. That should really hurt. I wonder what the Italian national morale looks like after that. National morale of Italy... It's still pretty strong. It's at 95%. But, you know what? I don't care. Okay. Let's move these guys south. Why you gotta run into enemy frickin' fricks? Alright, can we move up here and hit the destroyer and then pull back? There we go. All right, what about our destroyers? Can we go... We don't have any destroyers left over here, do we? We do not. I don't have money to fix my battleships that I wrecked. Uh, and then the enemy destroyers are now in port, so I can't really hurt them all that effectively either. We'll leave these ships off the coast of Tobruk, because to my understanding, if you leave troops adjacent to a port, it hurts their supply. Oh, we do have one destroyer over here. Of course the sub dies from attack. Fighters! Enemy BF-109s! Uh. God damn it. 
Carrierless planes. I don't know what it bombed with. The air, the air wing was destroyed. You can't get out of the frickin' port. Alright. Well, at least it's only a French battleship that'll probably get demolished. Okay, so that, I think, is the situation in France. Pull the British carrier back here. Enemy sub! Another enemy sub! But he's in port. I can't really do much against him. Can my bombers hit him over there? No. He's too far away, dooby dooby. Too far away, dooby doo. Alright. Maybe our aircraft can come bomb the port. Except it's raining everywhere! Nice. Good job, Mr. Carrier. Alright, so the British have 245 more MPPs left. I don't really want to evacuate Australia just because I would be worried what the Japanese would do. And I do think there is some value in leaving some of these ships out here for when Japan eventually goes to war. And I know it seems like they're kind of far away, but it's going to take a long time to move anyone around. Go ahead and reinforce these guys. I want to get these guys all up to strength for when the eventual attack on Singapore comes. Meanwhile, in China... Is there any way we can have success against Pak Boy? Nope. Damn it! Alright. Um, so we damaged the troops near Pakoi again, but we couldn't destroy him, which is the lesson of this frickin' war. Trying to damage the troops at Canton. We'll try and damage this Japanese army here also that's attacking at Henan. Ooh, can we destroy it? Oh, we got so close! We couldn't! We couldn't destroy him. We were so close. Uh, we crippled him. That's nice, at least, I guess. Can we attack here? Got him! Yes! Woohoo! Take that, Japanese army. That's the second Japanese actual full-size army destroyed in China. Huzzah! All right, so that's a good result. Um, China has some money. I think maybe we want to use it on upgrading our troops. Don't we have level one infantry now for China? What's the what's the research say? Infantry weapon. China is not yet level one. They're getting close. Okay. Um. That being said, let's go ahead and reinforce these guys. They love to bomb Pao Tao, so we'll go ahead and reinforce them. These troops are being attacked heavily in fortifications, so we'll reinforce them. This army got driven back and needs reinforcements, so we'll give them reinforcements. Again, these troops are getting isolated and attacked pretty heavily. Alright, so that pretty much does it for our reinforcement schedule here in China. Meanwhile, we've got these special forces, these engineers... I don't know where to move them! Like, I'm trying to build my little, um... Maginot line here. But it, it doesn't look like they can move to this hex here. They don't have the mobility to do it, so I guess we gotta move back. That kind of bends our line back here. Um, are these guys only level 3 strength? Alright, we'll have them fall back a little bit. Just to get out of the way. To get safe. Get safe, my boys! Get safe! Alright. Um, so we destroy that Chinese army, which is great, and we already tried to attack there and failed. So yeah, well, that's a, those are good results. Um, we'll just kind of stand pat then in China for the rest of this turn. 
What all didn't we do? We did North Africa, we did Ethiopia, we did South uh, Africa, or at least most of South Africa. Um, I can't reinforce everybody. I don't have the money for it. All these garrisons north. Um, can't reinforce those naval assets. I guess we can reinforce our aircraft and these carriers. I don't have enough, enough to reinforce them completely. But give them eight, eight new aircraft. Spent a butt ton of money doing that. Move these destroyers back to port. Upgrade this battleship to naval weaponry level one and air defense level one. Upgrade this battle cruiser to naval weaponry number one and air defense number one. These cruisers aren't in port, so they can't upgrade. Move these guys back to port. Alright, I shouldn't have moved that carrier out there. He's going to be a bit of a sitting duck, and the enemy will probably hurl its subs against him. The one good thing is, of the subs that we see here, there's three enemy submarines, and two of them are crippled. So, probably be ill-advised to attack it. But we'll move one sub adjacent to him, just to make sure that they don't get an easy... I guess we can move two, two naval units here, to make sure they don't get an easy shot against him. We could actually move all... Block all approaches. They'll either have to cross the destroyers this way or this way, so the only thing they can go after him is air units... So that'll be good. Um, yeah. So that's going to do that. We already attacked in the south there. This naval guy can't move. He's pinned in there. Uh, we already destroyed the sub here. Or the ship here. All right. So overall, I think the Italian Navy has three vessels left, and there's one destroyer and two subs here that we can see. There's, I think, one more sub, maybe. But in any event, they're much weaker than they were before. None of those carriers are, carriers are French, so they'll all stick with us after the war, or after the French surrender. I can't spend any money on there, so we'll save what's left of the British money. Meanwhile, for the Americans, let's go ahead and spend some additional research on infantry weapons. Let's also go ahead and spend some money on uh, infantry warfare training. And let's spend some money on armored warfare training. And that's all the money we have for this turn. So the Americans are researching a lot. Um, not maxed out in R&D yet, though. The Russians, they could invest one more in anti-tank. They could advance... They've got almost 900 of excess research that they can commit to. Logistics are probably important for Russia, too, so we'll spend some there. All right, meanwhile, we also did rail some units from Siberia to the Russian front, so we've got a little bit better of a, of a front line now. Um, and I think we actually could start upgrading some units, too. I'm not sure. I mean, we need more headquarters units, too. We'll move the Murmansk uh, unit here to the border up north here. I don't think that's that's a Finnish border. There's no Norwegian border there. So actually, they probably don't even need to be there. Um, we know Finland should be peaceful because Finland won the Winter War. I guess we can try and reinforce some of these guys. I don't have any money left, I guess, to reinforce them. Or maybe I can't reinforce... Oh, they're garrison units, so they're already over strength. Okay, so that's that. The Indians have 173 points, so can we spend that on anything worth researching? Infantry level weapon, weapons level 1's already researched. We're just shy of enough money to do more. What's infantry warfare do? Unit morale is increased, that's it. Spying and intelligence. I mean, everyone was telling me when I was playing before that spying and intelligence is one of the most important things. So I'm investing heavily in that across the board. Reinforce the British aircraft. Reinforce these bombers. And that'll do it for this turn. All right. So I think that's going to do it for the August turn. We'll see if France can hold on into October because the next turn will be September. So if we can withstand one more blow by the Germans, then we'll be able to last to uh, September. 
given where we're at right now in this turn, we're already 20 plus minutes in. I don't think it makes sense to do another turn in this episode. This, so this will be a little bit of a shorter episode. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, but we'll pick it up next time. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the series as always. And uh, please uh, leave your thoughts down below. Until next time, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, we're out.